Hello, I am back in Zach's here on the WICR Morning Show, and now I am joined by Jersey Joe. Happy to be here, and you know, my dreams were partially crushed this weekend. For people who don't know, I'm just a huge Auburn Tigers fan, and uh, so I was writhing in pain when they lost this game to Texas A&M. Ian, if I told you Texas A&M struggled against UL Monroe last week, and they won 21-16, to Kyle Allen had one touchdown, one interception, and in this game, Auburn had no answer. He had four touchdowns, one interception. He just moved the ball at will. I, it, it ruined my dreams, Ian. It ruined my season. You know, Joe, it's that's the greatness of college football right there. That one week, as you said, you can struggle against a nobody. At home. At home. Come out, play the number three team in the country, and win. At their place. Uh, unbelievable. I mean, it was just. Um, I mean, it just. We were just having a conversation about this. This season in college football. I mean, it's been historically good. I mean, even going down the wire in the last couple weeks of the season, nothing is for sure. You. Lo- we were just looking at everybody's schedule the rest of the way. There is a lot of room here. I mean, we're really going to be unsure of who the top four is going to be until maybe the final week. It's nothing's for we sure. We might not even know then. No. And that's and that's gonna make a whole other conversation because legitimately, I mean, I'll give you my top four, and I want you to give me your top four. But right now, my top four is Mississippi State, Florida State, Alabama, and Oregon, and then TCU at five, looking in. But I think when you look at these teams, there's really no sure thing. Mississippi State's got Alabama this week. Uh, they could very much lose that game. They should play Ole Miss the final week. Florida State the rest of the way, it's pretty easy. But you look at Alabama. They play Auburn still rivalry week. They play Mississippi State this week. Then, I mean, there's no sure thing here. Could a team like Auburn come back? Could a team like Ole Miss come back if they finish strong the rest of the way? It's really a possibility. I think we're going to end up right back where we were a few weeks ago. If you look at it, I have I have Alabama coming off of that great win against LSU. What a phenomenal matchup. Every single year, those oh, yeah. two teams, such a battle, always right around Veterans Day, and really just a phenomenal game. I was going crazy watching this game. I, I remember, I think it was maybe about three years ago, the, these two teams battled to a 9-6 victor, uh, victory for LSU. That was the year that they ended up playing, playing each, each other, each other in, the in the championship. championship. Yeah. And I remember thinking to myself, that was one of the greatest college football games I've ever seen. Yeah. I, no touchdowns scored in the game, all field goals, and just, just an absolute battle of wills on defense. And that's exactly what we had here. Now, granted, the quarterbacks were mediocre at best so you know I don't know how much of it you attribute to that how much of it you attribute to the great defenses but still just a phenomenal battle there but I think that Alabama takes the momentum from that game knocks off number one Mississippi State but then in the final week of the season it's going to lose to Auburn I'm with you so then we've got you know do you go with do you go with Mississippi State? But they lost to Alabama. So do you go with Alabama? Well, they lost to Auburn. Yeah. So do you go with Auburn? Well, they lost to <laughs> Texas A&M. Yeah. So let's, let's go with oh. Texas A&M then. It's just going to be absolute chaos it the is. rest of the way. It really is. And the thing that drives me nuts about LSU is their defense is so good. I mean, their running game, Leonard Fournette, is terrific, but Anthony Jennings is horrible. I'm sorry. He's horrendous. I mean, if you had a somewhat capable quarterback on that team, they would be a top-five team in the country because their defense is that good. They have that good of a running game. But Anthony Jennings, it it boggles my mind that LSU can't find someone better at quarterback because he really is just bad. I mean, there's no way around it, and I feel bad calling the guy out. But he's terrible. He really is. You know, Joe, you said if LSU has a good quarterback, then they would be a top five team in the country this year. And I agree with you. But then, as you were saying that, I'm thinking to myself, that's exactly what we need. Another top five team from the SEC West. Yeah. Oh, my God. Auburn. As if we don't have enough of those. 
it's I mean it's just the thing like why we give the SEC so much respect is just just at a different level and kind of going back to your thing about Mississippi State I'm with you I think Alabama right now I'm leaning towards them for that game but the one reason I'm still a little hesitant on that one is Mississippi State I mean had can I mean Dak Prescott really is improved his game tremendously from last year last year he was such a one-dimensional quarterback really struggled throwing the football this year that is a strength of his he's really improved that part of his game and I think you look at this game this week and Anthony Jennings is maybe one of the worst passers in the SEC and now you're bringing in a guy like Dak Prescott who's a threat to run and throws the ball well I think that's why I'm still a little hesitant because I think Alabama has face that too much this year a guy as dynamic as he is so it's going to be an excellent matchup but as always in the SEC you just never know until the game actually starts no and really I just do not think that Mississippi State can run the table in the SEC West I think it is pretty much with this this year with all of those top teams I think that there is no way that anyone can run the table there and hey, you know we've we, we've seen it so far. They're just the last team that has to go down. Yep. Mississippi State lost, or no, Miss. Excuse me. Mississippi lost. Auburn lost. Alabama lost. So it's just they're just the last team that has to lose, and you know it might be unfortunate for them that their loss is going to come at a late portion of the season. Because it's all about when you lose. It is. But here's the thing I like about the committee is I think this committee is a little bit more forgiving of that. I mean, we saw a couple weeks ago when their first uh, bracket came out for the playoffs. They put Ole Miss still in there, even though they lost that game which uh, to LSU, which they didn't really consider a, a really— I mean, that was a relent, I mean, t- just such a big game against a great SEC team. So I think the, the committee will be a little bit more forgiving on this. But it, it's like we keep saying, it's still so difficult there because you're going to have so many good teams around that same ballpark how do you differentiate them I mean the one team we really haven't talked about is Florida State and Florida State hasn't lost a game in two seasons now but they're they've been nowhere near as impressive as the Mississippi States the Alabamas even a team like Auburn who I mean in this game struggled and lost I mean they haven't been as impressive as Auburn they haven't been as impressive as TCU and they're, they've got to stay there though because you can't take them down because they haven't lost a game but it just goes to show you there I mean there's just so many different difficult options we have to consider but that's why I love the college football playoff yeah because you know you think oh Florida State you know they haven't lost the game in two years so they have to be there but they, they haven't looked as impressive as a lot of those teams from the SEC so what we're gonna have a, 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 a voters decide which team is better no Put them on the field. Put them on the field. Put them on the field and have them see which team is better. That's the only which way. Is why I absolutely love the college football playoff. And another reason why I love it is with everything, someone's going to get left out. Yes. In the March Madness tournament, number 69 gets left out. Yep. You know, there's always going to be that team, oh, we should have been in instead of this one. In college football, with the BCS, it's been the top two teams playing for the national championship, and that's it. So number three gets left out. Number Right now, that would mean Alabama doesn't get a chance to play for a national championship. Yeah. And that and that's why I think right now they've they're getting it right. They got it right. This is the direction to go in. But there's definitely like you said with the NCAA tournament, we can live with that uh, with that last team not going in. I mean, at the end of the day, like last year was uh, Southern Methodist U- University. It was kind of like okay. I mean, you could they could make a case for them to go in, but no one's losing sleep about it. I mean, even with the top four, you're gonna maybe leave out a team like TCU, maybe a team like Ohio State, and that's just kind of a unfair because they've been unbelievable I mean I think this is a great start no one should complain because they're finally getting it right but there's definitely room to improve I mean let's look at this if you had the top eight right now you could have Bama you could have Mississippi State you could have Florida State you could have Oregon you could have TC you could have Arizona State you could have Ohio State and you could throw in an eighth team there I don't know who you would put but 
I mean, it's just unbelievable. That would just be, like, in my dream, something I think of. But it's good right now, but it, there's definitely room to get better. You know, if if we did expand it to an 18 playoff, you know what it would be? It would be the seven teams from the SEC West <laughs> and Florida guess, yeah, State. Yeah, Florida because State. They, only because they haven't lost. Oh, yeah, that that's pretty good, Ian. Yeah. That, that's basically it. But, no, it, all joking aside, it's so much better that number five is getting left out than number three. It is. Because, it is. yes, as, as I said earlier, someone has to be left out. And, you know, number three has a, has a, a lot bigger claim to competing for a national championship yep. than number five does. And even the thing, like, TCU, I love TCU. I'm a big Gary Patterson fan. I've always uh, My favorite player, LT, he went there, so I've always been a big fan of the program. But it's just the Big 12 is just not as fair because there's no championship game. And at the end of the day, that's just an, uh, compared. I mean, you look at a team like, let's say Mississippi State goes out and they beat Ole Miss in the rivalry game. If then they, they still have to play that SEC championship game. And you're not playing a small team like Kansas. You're playing a team like Georgia or Missouri, and I mean, th- they've had their ups and downs this season, but those are teams that could beat you any day of the week. It doesn't matter if you're Alabama, if you're Mississippi State, whoever you are. Those are teams that can beat you any time of the week. I mean, it's just the nature of the SEC. Any team, I mean, just I think the championship games just kind of separate things a little bit. I think it's unfair. And really, if you put a team like Georgia or Missouri in the Big 12, oh, yeah. They. I'd say they win that conference. If you put Georgia in that conference today, Georgia, you're 100% correct. I mean, teams like Baylor, I think we all like the flash with Baylor. Baylor would be exposed in a second against a team like Georgia. They really would. I mean, it, it's just the SEC at the end of the day is at a different level. You saw last year the only difference that set apart Florida State and Auburn was Florida State had the big arm passer in Jameis Winston. Auburn did not. Florida State had not been tested by any defense to that point. You saw Auburn, who had the worst defense in the SEC last year, push them around. They really got pushed around in that game. It's just the SEC is a different beast. It really is. And the one thing that I'm nervous about, though, is that the committee is going to favor conference champions. Yeah. So, of course, the SEC champion is going to get in. That's There's no question about that. Florida State, provided they went out, and even if they don't, I think the the with the body of work that they've done this year, and especially when you look at the last two yeah. years, they're getting it. And that's the hard thing for me, too, is, I mean, if Florida State just did this this season, they were still undefeated, I think you have room to kind of move them down a little bit. But it's just when a team hasn't lost a game in two years, it's really hard to take them off. I think if, if, if it was just this year, Florida State, might not be number two, but yeah. they would still easily get into the playoffs. Definitely. Especially if they happen. especially if they run the table. There's no way that they could say they are not one of the top four teams in the country. Agreed. Agreed. No no way. No way. So you know, you're gonna have the SEC champion, you're gonna have Florida State. That's pretty much two locks. But then outside of that, I'm just nervous that they might say, you know, Ohio State won the Big Ten, let's say. Yep. And you know, either the Pac-12 or the Big 12 champion, you know, they won. Let's put them in. I'm just nervous that there might not be two SEC teams in. I think that there absolutely 100% should be. And my top four are Mississippi State, Florida State, Alabama, and Oregon. The same four as you, Joe. I think that's it's a hundred percent fair, and I mean, there even last week there were so many people making a big deal about there being two SEC teams. There should be. If I mean, I said the numbers. I mean, look at it. You have Bama for Mississippi State or the rest of the way. Bama, Vanderbilt, and Ole Miss, and that's not even taking into consideration the championship. Bama plays Mississippi State, Western Carolina, and Auburn. I mean, do you take away Western Carolina? But Mississippi State and Auburn is brutal. I mean, it, at the end of the day, it comes down to who did you play. It really does. And there's just no one else who can match up with the schedule like that. And that that's after playing. Yeah. I mean, just looking at the at the end of the season, you think, oh, okay, so they have you know two tough games late in the year. Oh, that that's unfortunate scheduling. No, that's every single week for those teams. I mean, Alabama coming off of their game against LSU. Yep. Which was an absolute battle. Earlier in the season, they had to play Texas A&M, another good team. I mean, you just have so many 
good, good, good teams there, that it's it. You have to give them props for yeah. making it through that schedule. You do. I mean, look at Mississippi State. They had a stretch where, like we were just saying. They played LSU, Texas A&M, Auburn, Kentucky, and Arkansas. I mean, give me a break. Give me a break. That's that's unbelievable. No one else has a schedule like that, a stretch like that even. I mean, you're going from four teams that could be – I mean, you put even Kentucky and Arkansas, two of the weaker teams in the SEC, you put them in a, a conference like the Big Ten or the Big 12, they're star, starting to look a lot better than they do in the SEC. They really do. It's just a whole different ball game. I don't care that they're both in the, that there's so many good teams in the SEC West. You put the best teams in who deserve to be there, and at the end of the day, Mississippi State, Alabama, you could even make conversations for a team like Auburn. I mean, even in this game against A&M, aside from a couple bad mistakes, Auburn's a team that could beat anybody in the country on any given day. They really can. It's just a different ball game. 100%. And, you know, if you look at it, Auburn is v- still very much alive. They are. They very really much are. alive. Georgia this week, which is going to be a very good game. Georgia, re- that weird loss to Florida, they really bounced back this week with a big win. That's going to be a good game. And then you look at Auburn, they play Alabama rivalry week, but you just never count out a team like that because – I mean, it's one thing when you lose. Like, when Georgia lost to Florida, they were just really dominated in that game. Auburn hasn't been dominated in any of these games. They really, they've really, they all been close, coming down to the last play or two. You saw it in this game. I mean, Nick Marshall in the center, that weird exchange there. But it, at the end of the day, Auburn's a play away from winning another game. And you just got to take that into consideration. Yeah, and you, if you look at it, Auburn had that that miracle run really started right around early November last year where it, they were just you know winning games by by the by a pair. margins yeah and it, it looked like you know their their luck finally ran out and it lasted pretty much almost to the day for to an exact calendar it day. did Somebody so, told me that like Auburn ran out of miracles. I mean, it's like uh, miracles run out eventually, and uh, they had a great run with them. But um, unfortunately, my Auburn Tigers, it ran out a little bit. But there's still hope. It's still going to be very exciting the rest of the way. The Oregon Ducks, Ian, I need them to carry me. I need them to pick it up. You know, Joe, I, I really think that they will. I think that a, a lot of people know Marcus Mariota are yep. impressed with him. He's been having a phenomenal season this year. I'd say the Heisman favorite. I and, agree completely. And, you know, I think if they run the table, I really don't see how you can leave them out. I agree. And here's the amazing thing about Oregon. It just shows you how good Marcus Mariota is. They've got a lot of problems. Defensively, they really struggle. Their offensive line is being held together by super glue. I mean, it really is. To do what he's done this year and to win these games as big as he has, even in this game against Utah on Saturday, they struggled in this game, but the score didn't make it look like that. It's just Marcus Mariota has just been unbelievable this year. He's had an answer for every setback that Oregon has had to deal with. And at the end of the day, I mean, they've got a bye this week. They play Oregon State Rivalry Week. They play Colorado, and that's not accounting for the Pac-12 championship game. But you look at Oregon, if they do run the table like you just said, there's no question in my mind they should absolutely be one of the top four teams. It's going to be an exciting finish to the college football season. Certainly, Joe, I I can't wait for the final few weeks here, and then we got the championship games, and then you know we we finally see set in stone the four teams that are going to make the college football playoff, and then they're going to believe it. They're all out there on the field in January, and it's going to be so great. Oh my goodness! I just cannot wait for this. It's it's going to be so exciting. Jim. It is. I think the committee needs to call in on this show, and they need to get our take on it, because if they don't do something I like, I'm not going to be very happy about it, and I want them to fix it. So I want them calling in the show. You, you know why they have to listen to us, Joe? We demand greatness, Ian. 
that's the name of the game when we come on the air. Demand greatness. I mean, that that's a good show name right there. It is. Demand greatness. It is. No one else has that. I, I think whenever we do these weekly segments Monday morning, it's going to be demand greatness. Well, I mean, what better way to start off your Monday than demanding greatness? I mean, that's a good way. You want to set off the week on the right tone. That sets you up for a great week. It does. We got a day off on Tuesday. I mean, it's just a great week. We brought you greatness on this Monday morning talking college football. You had your NFL stuff. It's just phenomenal. Joe, I I couldn't have put it better myself. I'm leaving you at a loss for words. I love it. Y- you are. And you know what? You know how you can extend this already great Monday morning? Let's hear. By tuning into the sports vault. Look at, at that right o'clock. there. Look at the setup. That's beautiful. Greatness is is just in full effect this morning. Joe will be back on the air with Big Shot Rob in 55 minutes. As for me, I will be back on Friday and have a great week, everybody. Absolutely. Demand greatness, folks. Hello, everyone. This is Gregory Kasimis from the Metro Deli in Scarsdale. 